So now that we've talked about churn and customer lifetime value, let's look at how this is going to influence our customer acquisition. So one of the new metrics I want to introduce to you is something called customer acquisition cost. And this is a fairly straightforward metric. It's the average cost of acquiring a new customer. Now, this would include all your marketing, also indirect costs that maybe you can't attribute to a particular customer, but you're going to average that out so that you know that it costs you so many dollars to acquire one new customer. Now what we want to do is we want to take that number and we want to compare it to our customer lifetime value. Remember, our customer lifetime value is really the amount of money that we're going to get from that customer over the lifetime based on our current churn rate. So the thing about this is if we look at the customer lifetime value over the customer acquisition costs, we want to have some number that is greater than one here. Because if we have a value that's greater than one, that means that we make money on every customer that we acquire. If we have a number that is less than one, that means that we lose money on every customer that we acquire. Okay, so consider this example. Our customer lifetime value is $10. We make $10 off of every customer on average before they churn out, but it takes us $20 to acquire a new customer. Now you may be thinking, well, that sounds ridiculous. Nobody would do that. Well, if you've heard of something called the dot-com bust, this is when companies were looking at the number of customers they had, the number of clicks they had, the number of hits that were coming onto their website. They weren't measuring what mattered. And then they found that, oh, shoot, we are spending $40 to get a new customer. And that customer churns out very rapidly, and they are only giving us $10 worth of profit or value for our company. And several dot-com companies went under when people realized that these fundamental metrics were showing such a big discrepancy between the value of the customer and the cost to acquire that new customer. So this also informs our marketing budget. So if we do have a situation like this where it costs more to acquire a new customer, then we're going to get from that customer. We may want to look at cheaper ways to acquire new customers. Obviously, we want to look at how we can increase the value, reduce the churn rate, all that kind of stuff. But this is going to inform us as to how we're going to approach customer acquisition as well. Of course, if we have a situation where we get $100 worth of value for other, every customer that we acquire, well, then we can afford to spend $20 for acquiring each new customer. Now, what could that $20 represent? Well, it could obviously be traditional marketing. It could be marketing and social media. It could be coupons. Maybe you're giving a $20 discount to new customers. Maybe you are hiring someone to make sales calls, and you're willing to spend $20 for every new customer that they bring in. So that's another way to look at it. You can actually hire people on a commission basis so that every new customer, uh, once that customer places an order, that you will give a payout of $20, a finder's fee, if you will. So you can see how that way back where we start out with churn and then got a customer lifetime value, how that figures into our approach to customers overall and into how we're going to make our business profitable in the long term. So now we're going to go on to our last big metric that we're going to look at, and we're going to try to judge how satisfied those customers really are with our business.